Hello and welcome to Paw Prints on the Mountain, brought to you by the Humane Society of the White Mountains. I'm your host, Mike Bosley. Joining me today is Dina Pace, but before we get to Dina, it is time for Mike's Pet Peeves. <laughs> Of course, this is the opinion of me, not the opinion of the Humane Society nor the board, though they may agree with what I'm saying. It's not the official opinion of anybody except for me. So, the word scuttlebutt. I come from a marine town, and the word scuttlebutt is another word for gossip or rumors. The word scuttlebutt originates from talking out your rear with the intention of sinking the ship, which is what the word scuttle means. This day and age, cyberbullying has become a massive issue. So massive that Apache County has issued a poster contest for all the elementary school kids. Digital bullying is a thing. Uh, at first, when I heard about digital bullying, I was like, what? Getting bullied is a rite of passage. We all got bullied in school. But then I actually started to think about it. And bullying in school really affected my life later on. I wasn't able to find out who I was because of all the walls that I had built up throughout growing up and being bullied. The same goes not just for little kids in elementary school. Adults do the same kind of bullying talking about things that they don't know really the facts of with the intention of harming somebody all because they can behind the message board or a keyboard. So I'd like to just to remind you it really irks the heck out of me when you don't know what you're talking about but yet you pretend to. That's pretty much like the guy in seat 23D jumping up and saying I can fly this plane better than the pilot and running up and trying to fly the plane. It's gonna crash and it's <clears throat> never a good scenario. So unless you don't know the facts maybe don't say anything or research and find out the facts. As a new parent, I have to constantly now think of things that my parents taught me and things that I'm going to teach my son. It seems this day and age, do unto others as you'd like them to do to you, has been gone. What happened to the golden rule? If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. These are classic lessons that we need to teach our younger selves and sometimes we need to turn that upon ourselves. So take a moment before you type that huge sentence showing your outrage because you think you have an idea, breathe. Take 10 seconds, learn the facts, and then approach the situation. You just screaming online on Facebook about something that you saw is doing more damage than just you venting. It's like a ripple effect. You can't really see what damage you have done, but somebody down the road is gonna think they saw that post and remember the negativity, and that negativity is gonna to continue to grow. Instead, find a way to be positive. I know that's not a very funny pet peeve today, but that's just <laughs> something that's really been on my mind. So please, Virtual world is that. It is a virtual world. So much connection than what we used to have a long time ago. So please, just take a couple seconds, learn the facts before you shout out anything. And that goes for politically, religiously, and of course, the humane societally. Society? -ly? I think that that's, sounds like a good new word. Th that's a good new I word. I don't have to say it, do <laughs> no, I? No, 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 no. <laughs> we'll keep that. Uh, thank you for joining me, Dina. Yes. Sorry to be so somber there. You know, though it does affect us. Just you hit right on some of the things that can affect us. And you know, what I tell people is, we are not the same humane society we were 20 years ago. Right. Not even 10 years ago. Right. We are a totally new humane society. Yeah, we're at the same location we've been at for almost 50 years now. Right. But we do things totally different. You know, um, our animals have such high 
live release rates that in the in the animal welfare world they would call us a no kill right I don't like to do that for personal reasons but people don't realize all the good that we really and truly do for this community on a daily basis so out of curiosity let's just say you went over your own head and you claimed the Humane Society is a no-kill shelter. Would that change public opinion about the Humane Society? Potentially, but potentially our experience with social media uh -huh. is um, they would say there's no way they are. There would be negative stuff written about us. Um, it's the facts though. Right. One of my biggest things is when someone says to me, are you a no-kill? And I ask them, what do you call or consider a no-kill? Right. So, you know, if an animal's suffering to the point where we cannot fix it and its quality of life is it's in pain and we cannot take care of this animal, we euthanize it for the animal's benefit. Of course. You know, or if uh, they're so aggressive and they don't turn around to where we can get them adoptable. That becomes a liability, not only to us, but to the whole community. But people just see that that no kill word, and most of the time they just read the headlines of the news thingy that scrolls past <laughs> and not to read the article. Right. But a no, what, so what is the definition of a no kill shelter? If your live release rate is 92 or 94%, so your live release rate is 92 to 94 mm percent. -hmm. They're gonna, you can. They consider you a no kill. Mm -hmm. Wow, but people just think the word no kill and, right. and that's right. what they, they associate a 100 percent release rate. But Absolutely. that's actually almost virtually impossible. That would be impossible. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. If you're doing things humanely, that would be impossible. Okay, so. Humane society. All right, I mean, that's in the yep. name. Yep. All right, so there's the true facts. Ladies and gentlemen, the true facts. By the law, the Humane Society could be called a no-kill shelter, but you have chosen not to do that because you don't want to be deceiving. Correct. You want to be as transparent. Correct. As virtually possible. Absolutely. Then I think that makes sense to me. Absolutely. And it sounds like instead of abusing the title, no kill shelter, you're actually living that title. Right. Makes perfect sense to me. Right. Well, that's yeah. awesome. Absolutely. Well, so speaking of the shelter, um, Happy Tales wrapped up a little while ago. Yes. And yes, so it did. give us give us the director's little spiel on how what your thoughts of this year's Happy Tales were. You know what? It was amazing. Okay. It was amazing. Every year we have more and more people that attend it, that volunteer for it. And you know, I really want to give all these volunteers a great, all our volunteers always a great big pat on the back. But with the Happy Tales, you know, we can't do it without our volunteers. Terry Bankert was here for the last we couple of months. We love her, yes. She was the chair this year. Now, as a volunteer, I am, I'm I'm looking for a volunteer to step up and be the chair for next year. Okay, so there so you go. So if you're interested, anybody out there, <laughs> get with me. Okay. You know, this is a big taking on, and there's going to be a lot of help, but, you know, so um, I would say it was amazing. We served more meals than ever, 602 meals. Yeah. And that doesn't include the people that buy the barbecue tickets and never redeem them. Right. You know, I personally know for a fact that I bought some for my family, and some of them didn't eat, so, you know. And, you know, after after happy tales I started thinking and it's something I'm going to do as a business owner for next year um, is I'm actually going to buy a raffle ticket and a lunch ticket for my employees and send them there for hey go have some fun and I will advise them that hey you're getting this free food and a free raffle ticket drop a couple bucks because I'm, I'm paying for you to go to a fund raiser. Right. Uh, so utilize that's, that. But that's I mean, nice. What a great, that's, let's that's do a great that. idea. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. We'll try you and know. catch that on with other, hey, other White Mountain business owners. Send your employees to Happy Tales. Buy them the ticket, buy the raffle ticket. And, uh, you know, they feel loved. And we're doing something great for the animals. 
And we can tell them next year it's August 29th. Oh, that's we know the date. All right. We got the date. We all are right. Secured. Yes. Well, so, good, good, good. Absolutely. So I would say all in all, Happy Tales was another amazing event. Um, our bottom line turned out that we actually netted more than last year. And every year that's we do better amazing. and better. So, wow. you know, and, <clears throat> and it's it's such a fun event. Oh, yeah. You know, it really oh, and truly yeah. is. And people come from all over to join this. And if they haven't, let's just invite them again. Let's just keep inviting <laughs> right. everybody, you know, because this is all about the Humane Society. Everyone seems to think that because we say Humane Society, we're funded by the national organizations, uh, and we're not. Another non-true fact. Exactly. So, and you know what? You're right. We are transparent. I always, you know, when people ask questions and stuff, I tell them, hey, you know what? Come on over to my office. Let's sit down and talk. Right. I'll answer any question you want to know as honest as I can. I'm a very honest person, so, you know, I'm very transparent in my personal life and also in my business dealings, so. And yes, anybody that does know you knows that's a very true statement. Yeah, so. I'm pretty much an open book. <laughs> so the, the animals have my heart and soul there, and so anytime I see things or hear things that are not true, it hurts me because it hurts the animals. And that's who, when, when people do say bad things that they really don't know facts on, you're hurting the animals. Right, right. So. It's, it's that ripple effect. Just because I typed this on a keyboard, I'm not thinking about the actual animal that's in a kennel that we're trying to get a home for. Right. And speaking of getting homes for some animals to a lighter topic, uh, we have some adoptathons coming up soon. We do. Okay. So this month, October 5th, we have one at PetSense, and that is the second annual or second national adoptathon for the year. We do two a year there, one in the spring and one in the fall. Okay. And so at that, there, when I say adoptathon, <clears throat> it's like the big ones that we join in Phoenix. It's not just us there because uh -huh. we're there every Saturday with adoptable dogs and our adoptable cats are at PetSense sense every day but this one will have uh, pet allies usually comes round valley animal rescue the poodle rescue comes up from phoenix a lot of times okay and they're going to have all different um animals you know sometimes um, I believe the equine rescue comes over with information about themselves oh, okay a couple of years ago they even had the well wolf uh, sanctuary out of New Mexico came and had a wolf with them oh wow so, I did not get that memo that you, <laughs> yeah if I hear they're gonna be there this year I'll let yeah, you know please, personally please, please do but yeah so we have that coming up and that's just really close now October 5th and then we have our strut year mutt which is a fundraiser and everyone goes oh here they go again with another fundraiser our fundraising can never stop no totally well we can't stop saving lives so why can we stop fundraising that is That's true yes it takes money to save these lives <laughs> so we have strut your mutt which is we're a partner with best friends out of utah and so they're doing a strut your mutt walk down in phoenix on October 19th I believe it is and so we'll be having stuff out on Facebook and on our website so you can pledge money uh -huh. and uh, all the money goes over to best friends and then they send us one check so it is all the money that we all the money that, still that's here. pledged to us right. stays with us okay. yes and uh, that's really a fun thing last year our team that went down and did this they take their dogs and they <clears throat> strut their mutt at, at Cheever, Caesar Chavez Park okay and uh, we actually won, our team did, the Team Spirit Award. I do remember seeing that on Facebook last year. Okay, and so what that got us was we got a bunch of stuff that we needed for the shelter, for the animals, from Best Friends as a prize. Well, that's awesome. That was a double win then. It is, you know, and, and they said, what do you need most, you know? Is it food? What do you need? We need it laundry soap. We need it bleach. We need it collars. We need it leashes. You know, things like that. And so we were, they sent all that stuff out to us for winning that. So this year the team that's going down goes we got to beat our goal last year you know we, we didn't even try to win you know we right. just you know they did because it's just a group of fun volunteers that go on down Terry I think has talked me into going this year oh, ho, ho. medically wise I couldn't last year but I think this year I'm gonna be good to go so. all right well we there you go a uh, take a walk with Dina and the mutts there in Phoenix you said October 19th yeah October 19th and if you can't make it to Phoenix October 19th check out the Humane Society's website and pledge some money for Stretch Mutt. We'll be back in just a couple moments as we talk more Humane Society and more saving lives. We'll be back in just a moment.
Welcome back to Paw Prints on the Mountain, brought to you by the Humane Society of the White Mountains. I'm your host, Mike Bosley. Joining me the, this afternoon is uh, Dina. Hello again. Hi. All right. So uh, we just finished talking about the stretcher mutt and the adoptathon there at Pet Sense. So there's ways that people can help out monetarily to the Humane Society. Always. <laughs> but there is always ways to help not monetarily though. Oh, absolutely. You know, Mike, one of the most important things people can give us is themselves, right. time. Right. You know, and for that we're always grateful and that falls back to our volunteers. So another way of volunteering is fostering. Okay, so you've talked about fostering before, but let's do it again. Um, so if if I wanted to foster a puppy because it sounds like fun. Actually, not me personally. I've got a full house. <laughs> not fostering. Um, but if someone wanted to, so they just show up and say, hi, I want to foster. How does the process work? So there's a form to fill out to foster. Of course. And then in that form, it says if you want to do dogs, cats, medical cases, um, adults, you know, young ones orphans, stuff like that, if you're willing to bottle feed every two hours, things because like that. Because it takes a lot more than just saying, I'm going to take a puppy home. Right. There is medical conditions. There is things that the puppy needs. Right. Like right now, um, we have one dog out with a really wonderful volunteer. She took it home because it was going to have puppies. It had six puppies a couple weeks ago. Uh -huh. And so she's fostering that dog and the litter of puppies. What a full house. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then right now we have two of our staff members are bringing kittens. Actually three. They are bottle feeding kittens uh, that were wow. orphaned. So we need people to step up and say, hey, you know what? Or we have some cats right now, too, that are getting ready to have a litter. If you can take that in, we'll supply everything you need. Okay. Everything. If if they're orphans, we supply the milk, the bottles, the syringes, you know, if they won't drink out of a bottle, uh -huh. uh, the litter, the blankets, the everything they need, we will supply it. Wow, okay. And then we stay in contact with you, tell you when we want it back for checkups, when it starts vaccinations, everything like that. And then the other part of that, too, is medical. Sometimes we have medical cases. And and even though we may have someone signed up on medical, I'm going to talk about Cammy because Cammy's not ready to go into a medical foster. Cammy's a dog that was run over right. in uh, September. Uh -huh. And we could see when she came to us that her leg was broke. A one week later, we could also see that she had been nursing puppies. One week later, someone called and had found the puppies. And we're so thankful for that situation because the puppies were still alive. They were actually feeding them themselves. They were feeding them? Oh, the... the Supplementing. The people that found, found them, them had found the, had, had started feeding the puppies. And these puppies were so small, but what impressed me was they were not bottle feeding them, I guess. They must have, been, they must have taught them how to lap out of a pan. Wow. So... So Cammy in the last week has had to have not even a week ago she had to have surgery on her leg and she's got this big um, splint around it also and so during the week's time she was close to drying up with not enough milk oh. then the puppies were starting to bring it back into her and now she's had surgery oh, huh. so Cammy needs a place to recover but we also want her and the puppies to be able to be together so we're putting them together during the day while we're there uh -huh. and feeding the puppies right. so things like these are all medical cases people that have medical experience that can go okay this dog I'm gonna have to carry it out to go potty carry it back in right. you know I can't let the babies get in this splint because or near the stitches she can't chew her stitches apart it, there's a lot of work that goes into it right and so it's it's someone that has the time and there we go back to giving of your time well there's a lot of money that has gone I mean the veterinarian that's done the surgery on her leg bless her heart i know who she is and she is an angel on earth but she doesn't do everything for free oh no no she has expenses in it too right she'll definitely give us a very good discount oh, yeah 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 but yeah. that's why anyone that follows us on facebook has seen about cammy um there's a facebook there and we're getting donations to help pay for her care uh phoenix animal care coalition 
that we're part of uh, down in Phoenix. Um, immediately when I got in and seen about Cami, I sent them her picture and her story that we knew she was backed over by a car. Uh -huh. The employees where she was backed over brought her to us. Um, and they, they designated $250 to her care. Wow. And so I posted that on on Facebook and said, hey, we've got a commitment of $250, but we know the surgery is going to be more. <laughs> and people are donating for her care and, and you know, for the surgery and stuff, right. which is great because now, like I said, the puppies aren't able to drink from her much at all. So we're supplementing them with goat's milk, and then we're also putting an egg yolk in, and they're eating four times a day right now because they're still so little, but they're increasing. They're going to be increasing more and more. So and they're... they're they're gonna make it they're going to make it we, we did lose one of them um, we lost one there were six that came in to us and one had to have a little minor well obviously it turned out to be a little bit more than minor um, repair done on it the same day its mom had surgery and and there again one of our staff members was taking it home and bottle feeding it every two hours but to save the rest of the litter yes. and the mom. Yes. I mean, what you a know, miracle. And, and you know, it is. Miracles happen for us every day. You know, they really do. Mm -hmm. And as hard as it was to lose the little one, and it was very hard for all of us, mostly Taylor that was caring for it, I'm sure, um, we have to focus all our concentration now to take care of the rest of them. Right. And, and not just Cammy and her litter, the other 46 dogs that I fed this morning, you know, and that's not including all the cats we have. So, you know, what we do is endless, but people help us, you know, and they help us whether it's by giving us their time to be a foster, a volunteer, um, some help with clerical, answering phones, doing you right. know, laundry and dishes. We can't do what we do without this volunteers, without all our volunteers, and we're very blessed to have the ones we have. And I'm going to give a shout out to Dennis. Dennis, if you ever watch <gasps> this, uh, you're awesome. You're awesome. And Dennis, you're awesome. Um, Dennis has made life so much sweeter for the animals in the in the D building. Exactly. And in the C and in the A. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the and he's, one, he and continues to make repairs for us uh -huh. there that we need. He's, so. he's an awesome volunteer. Now, if you have some kind of... Uh, you know, trade and you find you have some spare time, come on down to the Humane Society yeah. and we'd love to know what kind of trade you have and most likely there's something you can do around Absolutely. there. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter. Absolutely. All sizes, shapes of volunteers. Yeah. Now, keeping the shelter running and keeping the dogs in surgery, the medicine, the towels, the food, the laundry soap, all of this stuff that you listed, it adds up every day. Oh yes. Now, you have an everyday fundraiser. We do have an everyday fundraiser. And tell us about that everyday fundraiser. That is our doghouse thrift shop. Okay. Every day. You know, they are open Monday through Saturdays from 10 to five and they accept donations, gently used donations, Tuesday through Saturdays from 10 to 4.30. 4. Okay. We accept the donations till 4.30. That way we have 30 minutes to get them in and out of the weather and stuff. So, and you know, I will tell you, we're located at 3002 White Mountain Boulevard. Okay. In the old Hawkeye feed store. Okay. And that is our everyday fundraiser. And you know, you never know what you're gonna find there. You may go in, actually right now they have a bunch of camouflage clothing. Oh, wow. It's hunting season. Right, you know? right. So you may find anything from games to books to movies to literally ceiling fans, doors, you know, to redo your house or whatever. So you just never know. I mean, we have not just the store part of it, but you go outside and we have huge, yes, we huge. have, you know, house repair stuff, uh, exercise equipment. Some people are into that. I'm not, but some people are. <laughs> and then I'm sure you get a enough exercise feeding 48 dogs every morning. That's my favorite part of the job. I but bet. Anyway, uh, and then, you know, you go up in the barn and we have furniture and electronics, uh, microwaves, furniture. You, uh, so they, they, you step up into the barn or is there a second there's level? There's a the lamp or a lamp. <laughs> it's a ramp. There's lamps in the barn. You go lamps. up the ramp. <laughs> go up the ramp okay. into the lamps. Okay. All right. And microwaves. I mean, you just never know what you'll find. You can find cell phone cases. You can find, you know, everything, everything you're looking for. And, and the best part of this is, is everything's donated. Right. So a hundred percent of everything you spend there every day comes right back to the Humane Society to support these animals. Now, 
Uh, it's almost Halloween. Yes. And for all those do-it-yourselfers out there that love to create that awesome costume that's going to win that awesome costume contest at wherever that awesome costume contest is, <laughs> um, I love going to the doghouse thrift store, uh, thrift shop for costumes. Whether I'm dressing up as an old man, you've got a walker out back. Uh, yes. You've got, I mean, anything yes. you need, it's there at the doghouse. Absolutely. So uh, all you getting ready for Halloweeners, uh, I didn't call you a wiener. <laughs> I just said, let's just back up. For all those who love Halloween, I just, I really just make this up as I go along. Um, feel free, swing in the doghouse thrift yeah. shop and uh, there's lots of costume ideas. If you don't even have an idea, go in the doghouse thrift shop and maybe you'll come out with a brilliant idea. Absolutely, because they have Halloween stuff too that they've got out of or will have out. Of course, of course. Yeah. And I do need to take my last year's dog costumes to the oh, doghouse. We'll get them up there quick so we can repurpose those and that's sell exactly, them and make some more money. That's exactly right. Yeah. So maybe I'll do that this afternoon. We'll see. There you go. All kinds of stuff. Well, that's going to do it for today's edition. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Dina, for joining Thank me. Thank you. And we will see you next time right here on Paw Prints on the Mountain, brought to you by the Humane Society of the White Mountains.